Hi, it's Todd of Todd's Workshop and Todd Cutler here. And today we're back with the Lockdown Longbow for more trials. And what are we going to test today? Well, the whole idea of these things is to go in a purely medieval direction. We'll be looking at armour, we'll be looking at shields, we'll be looking at hardened leather gambesons, all sorts of stuff. But sometimes you get diverted. And I was just setting up for the next film where I'm going to put some armour onto a ballast weight, a sandbag. And I just thought, I remember a conversation I had with somebody a long time ago. 20 odd years ago, I was teaching a girl who had lived through the siege of Sarajevo. Hellish time, no politics please, not interested in that. But she said after a while the front line stabilised and they put their water butts up and their sandbags and everything else. And then somebody discovered bows and arrows shot through water butts and sandbags. And I thought that is really interesting that war has come in that environment down to yes guns and shells and all of that but also bows and arrows. I don't know the truth of it, but I don't suppose she was lying to me. She was there, she had no reason to. But either way, I thought, you know what? I need to find this out. So seeing as we're here, let's take our medieval arrow off our 150 pound lockdown longbow and shoot it through a sandbag or not through a sandbag. Down the range and ready to go. And with a job like this one, nothing better than a Todd's Workshop tactical t-shirt. So that's the one I'm wearing today. <coughs> Type nine armor piercing bodkin. Apparently, we'll find out about that. Whoa, straight through. Let's do that again. Wow. That was like it wasn't even there. I can't wait to have a look at the back of the target, actually, and just see how convincingly it's gone into that boss. Off again. It spins it around the corner a little bit, but I mean, it, boy, it's coming out the other end fast. Uh, I'm not sure about firearms, it's not my thing, but I do know a bag of sand does mess with a firearm coming out the other end, I think. Whoa! And again, that one skipped massively, so that's now about uh, 30 metres, 30 paces behind the target. Let's go and have a look. Yeah, so, I mean, as you can see, the line of direction should have been in like that. So it's now off at one side, both of them maybe about 15 degrees, so I don't know, it's a function of it going through the bag. But I mean, it's just so gone through. And come look at this. So what we've got here are the points coming through, 25 mil, something like that, an inch. Absolutely convincingly, if that is coming through the back of that boss, that strike in the front of the boss from, uh, well, from my own empirical guess, with around about, let's say, 70 joules of energy, plenty, plenty enough, I would expect that off a pretty powerful medieval crossbow, maybe a 600 pounder. So that, that's, that is impressive. That is really impressive. So thank you girl from Sarajevo. I've forgotten your name, whoever you were, I'm afraid. Uh, but that was really interesting. Well, I'm back and I am so glad that I did that actually. I took that little diversion because that was, I loved it, loved it. I kind of expected it because actually I believed that girl that I met, she had no reason, reason to lie. But I wasn't expecting it like that. I mean, it went in, as we know, with about 130 joules of energy, something like that. But to poke out the back of the boss, empirically from my experience with crossbows uh, and that sort of thing, I reckon you're talking about 70 odd joules left in the arrow after passing through the longbow to get through that. And 70 joules is, is a lot, that's a lot. So that's probably the same as a 100 pound longbow, something like that, 100, 110 maybe, that kind of area. So it's still a powerful projectile coming out the back. Really interesting. But I originally set that up to do some armor tests. So let's go do some of that. See you next time. Thanks.